Hello out there to all the lovers of the CRTs. There's beautiful babies. For this episode, we're just going to cut right to the chase. Right to the point. The chords. If you want the power for the CRTs, you need to get the power. Not from Nintendo Power, but of course, from the chords. And we're not talking about these chords, the common ones for the normal CRTs. Today, we're talking about ones for the portable CRTs, the detachable chords, the old chords, the weird chords, also known as the rare chords. Rare and weird detachable chords for some of the older portable CRTs. Chords only used for a very brief period of time, they were 30 to 40 plus years ago, and haven't been used since. The normal, non-portable CRTs have pretty boring chords that are soldered directly into the board, and from the outside, you can't even see what's going on in there. We're not talking about those boring, uninteresting chords today. We're talking about ones that are not directly soldered into the board. Ones with weird plugs and weird pins that seem to have been put together at random. Of course, they're completely detachable, which means they're easy to be lost and separated from their CRT forever, leaving it to never be turned on again, ever. As far as these rare chords go, there are some crazy proprietary ones out there, and some are almost impossible to come across. All chords are not created equal. Here is where the journey today begins. We've seen some rare proprietary detachable chords in the past from some previous episodes, and we're going to go back and look at them all. But first, let's go over a couple of the common ones that you probably see for some appliances and for your CRT. Uh, maybe not every day, but sometimes. First, the C13 cord. Super common, most commonly used for your older desktop computer or other low voltage appliances. It's been rare so far for any of my CRTs to require the C13 cord. And I think only one of them ever, this one, has needed this cord. All the way back in episode 39, we beat Battletoads on a wood grain RCA with a picture quality that looked great for 1990. Of course, harder to capture in video filmed outside, but yeah, it took a detachable C13 cord. First time I saw that, and honestly, unless I've forgotten, I don't think we've seen it since. Next, the figure eight cord, used for a ton of appliances, Basically anything with the two prongs sticking out of them. For some of them, or most of them, I'm not sure, it looks like this. They have one square side. We used this exact same figure eight cord with square side, kind of recently, in episode 87, with the Mini Emerson. Here's what it looks like without the square side. And I'm sure we used the normal figure eight cord, the one with no square side, for several other small portable CRTs in past episodes. Remember this figure eight chord because we're gonna bring it up again here in a couple minutes after we get to the main event of the evening and the main event of this episode, the case of rare chords. What is in the case of rare chords, you ask? Well, rare chords. The rare, proprietary detachable chords for some of those smaller, older portable CRTs. Chords that have been obsolete or haven't been available for over 35 years. This case will be the new home for those rare babies. Rare chords from past episodes and from episodes yet to come. Chords I might never ever find again, out there, 
in the wild. So first, let's go over the rare cords from inside the case right now that I've kept from previous episodes for future CRTs because I'd never seen them before and there's no guarantee that I'll ever see them again out there in the wild. Whew, it's getting hot in here. Even though these cords aren't rare, the C13 and the figure eights, I'm gonna keep them in the case of rare cords anyway, just for easy access, and I know where they are when I need them. Okay, here we go. There are actually only three cords currently in the case of rare cords, after beating Battletoads on 156 different CRTs. The first one is a super rare RCA four prong thing with a plastic thing sticking out of it. We first used this cord all the way back in episode 17. That five inch portable CRT with radio came with that cord. And after Battletoads was beaten, after the dust had settled, I knew that the cord was special and so I kept it just in case. Then, right before episode 54, I found another similar RCA CRT in my local flea market with the same weird plug, but it came without the cord. And luckily, I kept this cord from episode 17 and was able to use it for this one. And it worked like a charm. And once again, after Battletoads was beaten on the episode 54 RCA, after the dust had settled, I knew what I had to do. I kept the cord again, because I knew. We're going to have to keep this plug. Luckily I had it on the other RCA, and so I was able to use it for this one, because it didn't come with one. So if we find any more RCA mini TVs in the future with this crazy weird thing, we got it. Anyway. It's time for the beer. Okay, next chord in the case of rare chords. Just like the last chord, I have no idea what the official name of this chord is. I call it the fallout chord. because that's what we needed to power up the Fallout CRT that I found at the beach house all those years ago. I searched for over two years for this cord and finally found it at my local flea market. And eventually, we were able to give this beautiful baby the ultimate honor, the Battletoads and Scream. First step was finding this rare ass cord. But you know something funny that I found out years later? For this plug, you don't even need the fallout cord. You can just use a regular figure eight cord, the one that I mentioned earlier, and stick it on these two prongs, and it works. Apparently the three prongs on the right don't even lead to anything inside. They're just dead pins there for no reason. What kind of sadistic trick is that? But we used the fallout cord for all three of my fallout CRTs in episode 62 to give them that ultimate honor. But the second one, was made by Daytron, not Sears. So this fallout cord, was it really made by Sears? Who knows? I've never seen the fallout cord out there in the wild since, and I probably won't see it again. Today, we're going to add a new cord to the case of rare cords. One that I guarantee you've never seen before, but first, Here's a little case of rare chords bonus. Another thing that I have in here, previous free signs stuck to CRTs that I've rescued from the side of the road or from wherever. Want to see the collection? The 
first one is from the last episode, previously attached to my 20 inch nostalgic AF Toshiba. CRT number 156. And here are the others. Okay, last one. And I do not have all the signs for the CRTs because I came up with the idea a little too late from when I first started my channel and my mission to be Battletoads on as many CRTs as possible. So, don't have all the signs, but at least I have some of them. Well, I think it's cool. Anyway, besides the cord that'll be featured in today's episode, I have several rare cords to add to the case of rare cords. Cords that have not been seen in any of my previous episodes, and one of them is cord number three, the Obel connector. Now this is a rare cord. I've only seen one of them out in the wild ever, and I have it. It looks a lot like the C13 plug end, but it's not. It's different, and they won't work together. My cord is a hot mess. It's been spliced together. It's got three cords on it, and or three plugs, and then it's got electrical tape up here. It's all wires are coming out, but it works. I can use it to plug in my old JVC Vidstar VCR from 1979, and the JVC video monitor that I found at a thrift store a few years ago. But that's not the CRT, and this is not the rare cord for today. The rare cord for today might be even more rare, and it plugs into this beautiful baby. Beautiful. And that Sony Mega Watchman that I found from the same place, it'll definitely be featured in its own episode. And guess what cord it takes? The figure eight cord. But not this one. Do you see this though? Another fucking RCA with a weird ass proprietary cord. Seriously, what the fuck were they thinking? First, we had the other weird four-prong plug on an RCA, and now we have this other weird four-prong plug on an RCA. Well, are you ready? Rare cord number four. Here it is. Yeah, first time I've ever seen this cord, and I've seen a lot of CRTs, and I've seen a lot of cords. 
You've probably forgotten all about it, but eight episodes ago, we had a Nobby RCA XL100 show up from the Lost 32, and I told you we would see that label, XL100, again very soon. XL100 was just a gimmicky name RCA came up with. XL stands for Extended Life. Okay. While the 100 meant 100% solid state. Well, today's the day. Another XL100 joins the family of Orion Moses. And the cord will join the case of rare cords. That last one, the Nobby XL100, if you remember, was unable to obtain the Battletoads end screen because we couldn't even get a picture to come through from the NES. Hopefully, this one can be the first XL100 that we can get that signal to. Get power through the super rare cord, whatever it's called, so we can beat some fucking battle toots. There it is. Jeez, hard enough to get it in there. Okay, you ready? Moment of truth here for the rare cord. It's alive! The rare cord works. But you know what? Today, that's the easy part. Let me turn it back around. I'm sure you saw it when we plugged it in, but today we got to go back to the forks. But already attached to the forks is this cord with some super janky wiring going on here at the end onto a coax adapter that I am not giving much faith to. But we're going to try this first, and if it doesn't work, we're going to use this thing. Let's go. Cross your fingers. It's scanning for a signal. Let me see if I can get it one. Uh, the channel up and down is not working. But it is working. Let's just go through all the channels and see if one shows up on here. Or if one of them is the right signal. But it says 2 through 13, so I must have already went through them already. Okay, you know what? Fuck this thing. I'm gonna try to do it with the, the other forks. I count to 14, it should have went through all the channels. Turn my NES to channel 3. Oh shit, I just broke the janky wiring. Man. I need a screwdriver. Well, kind of running out of options here. 
these forks are always the worst. So I tried putting it on every type of combination of these. I tried taking these off and then putting them on individually. Every kind of combination up there. What's this thing? Let me change it to B. See if that works. This sucks. Oh shit. Then what happened to it? Uh oh. Oh. I can't see it, but I know it's there somewhere. I switched a couple of things around. I got a new part. Give me a minute. Oh man. Oh man. Oh. That's it, putting it right on there. Oh. Oh, looks like shit, but we'll mess with it. Oh, shit. Oh, oh my God, it looks great. Holy shit. Oh my God. I'm so happy. Well, gonna adjust some stuff here, but damn, it doesn't look too bad for old ass RF. Yeah, we fucking got it, baby. This is the final setup. Disconnect these two things, connect this to there, and then this, switch it to B. Well, only one thing left to do. We got the shitty port connection to work. We got the rear cord working. Let's beat some fucking battle tubes. Oh baby. Oh man. Harder to get on camera, but for an old CRT, it looks pretty darn good. And for RF. And for a connection through the forks. I'll take it. I am so happy that we got it working. Fucking god, dude. Die. Made it to the last level. I'll see you at the end.
I am beyond thrilled that that worked. The rear cord worked, the forks worked, took a lot of trial and error, but we got it, and an XL100 finally added to the story and the family of Orion Muses. There's one big problem, though. That big empty space right there, that's supposed to be the label for the model number and the date of manufacture, and it is long gone. So, I guess we're going to have to do a little bit of internet research, because I have to add it to the list. I'll figure it out. But yeah, another rare cord added to the case of rare cords. And I promise you 100% that there will be several new rare cords to add to the case in the very near future. Hey, I'm back. Uh, right after I turned off the game, I realized that we didn't do something. We didn't peel the seal. That was a rare peel the seal. Sorry, beautiful baby. And after Battletoads was beaten, after the dust, after the dust, after the dust, uh, maybe not all the time. Maybe what was it? Maybe not. We're not talking about those boring, unnecessary. We're not talking about those boring, uninter uninteresting. Oh my god. Jesus. Just like the last chord? I have no idea what this would be. Stuck on there, hard work? I think it's cool. Anyway. Oh man, what am I supposed to fucking say? More rare chords to come very soon. It's not even what I want to, what am I trying to eat? 